Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and we will be discussing protists today. Our objectives for today's lesson will be what are the common characteristics that all protists share? Number two, how do protists reproduce and develop? And number three, how are protists classified? Let's talk about the common characteristics of protists. Protists are mostly single-celled organisms. Some are multicellular. For example, we have algae, which are protists, and that would be an example of a multicellular or mini-celled protist. They live in moist or wet areas, and they're considered to be eukaryotic misfits because they don't quite fit the mold of to be exactly like animals, exactly like uh, plants or exactly like fungus, but they do share common characteristics. And actually, that is how we classify our protists. Are they more plant-like, are they more animal-like, or are they more fungus-like? Uh, examples of protists would be the amoeba, the paramecium, or the diatom. So let's discuss how protists reproduce. Protists can reproduce either asexually or sexually. If they produce asexually, they usually uh, use the process of binary fission, which means that there is a parent cell which divides itself into two to make two identical new cells. And here's a diagram of what binary fission would look like. Here's the parent cell. Here it copies its genetic material. Begins to divide. And you end up with the two new daughter cells or the two new identical daughter cells. Also, protists can regenerate. Some protists can regenerate, which just means that if a part of the protists were uh, broken or cut off, it would be able to make a whole new organism from a broken piece of an older protist. Protists can also reproduce sexually. Um, meiosis is the process of, that produces sex cells, the female and the male sex cells. And then the sex cells from two different protists can join, come together, and form a new protist. Now let's discuss the three groups of protists. Let's start with the animal-like protists. They have similar characteristics to uh, animals. Uh, they must capture other organisms for food. They can't make their own food. They have to uh, use their environment in order to capture their food. They do not have cell walls. Um, and they are considered or called protozoans. That's like another name for animal-like protists. Um, protozoans are one-celled animal-like protists, such as this amoeba that you see here. Uh, protists or protozoans live in or on other organisms, and those other organisms will be called hosts or host cells. Uh, protists have specialized vacuoles or sacs inside of their cells for digesting food and get rid getting rid of excess water. Examples of animal-like protists or protozoans would be the amoeba or the paramecium. This is a amoeba. This is also a diagram of an amoeba, and this would be a paramecium diagram. Now, some animal-like protists have specialized structures for movement. They must move because they have to capture their own food. So here are three specialized structures that protists use for movement. They can have the flagella, which is like a whip-like tail. They can have the cilia, which are the kind of like these little hairs that surround the outside of the protists, which help them to kind of push the uh, 
food particles or the nutrients inside of to it inside of its kind of like its mouth where the food would go inside the cell and it also has something like called a pseudopod which is like a foot like structure to help it to move too so any of these would be uh, useful structures for movement for animal like protists 